Okay. You've made it to the last chapter. I want you to think about that. Last chapter of math. It's chapter 19, vectors. And uh, after this, we just have a review and then the final. So it's starting to get down there. All right. Uh, let's talk about what a vector is. See all these arrows? After you know what vectors are, you'll understand a little bit more about uh, why we have those arrows there. Um, and uh, if I were to uh, give you a, like a goal for today, just to understand what a vector really is, uh, and a little bit about the notation involved with vectors, because if I write, uh, do you remember this, for instance? You should be able to process that and go, oh yeah, that's from those numbers. What kind of number? What kind of numbers were those again? Complex numbers, and that's actually a place that I could graph in rectangular. You know, over zero and up three in the i direction. This is the y i axis. Okay, so anyway, notation is important, um, and we're going to talk about the notation involved in these vectors. So I'm going to skip over that little thing. Scalar, if you use a scale, you could tell, like, the weight of something. For example, you could say, that fish right there is 12 pounds. It's 12 pounds and 6 ounces or whatever. Um, you can also measure things as simple as how much volume there is in something. Okay. Uh, none of these things would be vectors, but scalars are just kind of your classic number. But a vector, a vector has... Well, anybody remember a little character uh, that was in a movie called Vector. All right, I'm going to play a little clip uh, that, that involves him. From the clip, you saw a reminder that a vector is a mathematical term relating to something that has both direction and magnitude. All right, so, for example, if I said I am going to be driving 400 miles per hour, did I just tell you direction and magnitude? No, I just told you the scalar part. I told you the magnitude, 400 miles an hour. That's really, 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 really fast. There, it is actually possible. There's somebody who is making a vehicle that is going to break the sound barrier, um, and that's pretty awesome. Okay, because the sound barrier, Mach 1, also known as the speed of sound, is like 760-some miles per hour out of driving in something that's going that fast, just insane. So, and, and also the thought that there'd be a sonic boom behind something that you are driving is pretty cool. All right, anyway, so it's you got to be careful with these that you don't get them confused with just like a number because they have to have both direction and magnitude. All right, so um, we represent these things with arrows. So more than ever, this is going to be something that phone goes on my desk, please, because you were smiling at it, and that means you were using it. Okay, put it away. No, it's going to go on my desk, and you can have it back at the end of the hour. All right, so... This anatomy of a vector, it's... Okay, so anyway, we've got these pictures, and these pictures are important. More than ever, the kind of the, how they look is important, because if I draw these different, it'll mean a different thing. For example, if I say this is AB, or if I say this is AB, they're different lengths, and they're going in slightly different directions, and therefore they're totally different. Okay, so a vector has to be drawn carefully. All right, a vector that goes like this is completely different than a vector that goes like that. This one might have been going slower than that one, if that's what we were measuring. Like this one might have been going only one mile per hour in the direction of north. And this one could have been going in the direction of east at like 25 miles per hour or something like that. Okay, now, if I add vectors together, then you just... It's as simple as you might think. I got this vector, and I got this vector. I want to add them together. It's like I could have just gone from here to there, right? I could have skipped the, like, the long way, or I could have just gone the shortcut. Then that's the answer. If this is vector A, and this is vector B, then and the vector C was their answer, then it's just 
going from here to here, the shortcut. All right, what I want you to think about, though, is what if this is A plus B, then what would A minus B look like? I want you to play around with that for a second and try to figure out what you think that vector would look like, because it's totally different. It is not just like, oh, this going in the opposite direction or something. It's not that simple. See if you can figure out what you think A minus B would look like. I'm going to pause for a second while you try to figure that one out. Okay, by now I hope you've processed that it's got to obviously be different, and somehow uh, I have to do B especially different than A. Do you get in this A minus B? A hasn't changed really at all. So A is still here. But what do I do with B? Did anybody figure out that I would go the opposite direction, but the same magnitude? So negatives and vectors change your direction. And it makes sense. If I was going to say, OK, go 60 miles an hour. Now go negative 60 miles an hour. Do you get how that would sort of make sense to go the opposite way you were going in the first place? All right. OK, so then your answer for this is a vector. And if I drew this exactly right, except you know, the opposite direction, but the same exact length in the opposite direction, then my final answer would be, let me choose uh, red here. It'd be that vector. That vector has a name. It's called the resultant. That's kind of a dumb name, but that's what it's called. It's what results, right? It's the resultant. All right, so when you're adding vectors and you want to change it to subtract, you really can't subtract. You can only add that vector again, but in the opposite direction. It's sort of like the whole 6 minus 3 is like 6 plus negative 3. It's kind of like that. You can only add vectors, but they're going to go in opposite directions. To see if you really understood that, here's a nice little simple question. That's vector A. And by the way, I'm going to start getting better about the notation here. If I draw a line with a little half arrow on the end of it, that's the sign for vector. I know it's picky, but... You already have a thing for that. Do you remember what that is? That's ray, A. So vector has to not have the bottom part of the arrow. So if I'm going to blow it up here, it looks like that. That's a vector A. OK. And here, I know this is kind of weird, but I think it's important to get the difference. I'm going to draw you vector B over here. I'm not lining up up nicely for you. You have to do that to get the answer. But if this is vector B, then figure out what A plus B would look like, and then figure out what A minus B would look like. I'm going to pause for a second while you do that. OK, so I have the advantage of having this on my smart board, so I can just drag this thing. You always line them up, and this is going to be important when they get complicated. You always line them up from head to tail, like that. Okay, so there's A, and here's B, and now the resultant is where I put them together. And I'm going to make it a nice crisp black arrow with a pointy end on it. That black one there, that is the resultant. And I could label it as A plus B. My arrow got a little funky on the A there, but... How about A minus B? How many of you figured out that that would mean I'm going to take this, I'm going to see if I can do a flip, up, down, flip. Now I'm going to move it down there. There. That's minus. Because I changed the direction. And then I ended up head to tail. And now my final resultant to them is... Not like that. Do you get that those are totally different? They're in different directions. They have different magnitudes. All right. So 
why, when would that ever happen? Let me get to a slide that I really like about this. This uh, robot is pulling on the safe, and the guy is pulling on the safe. That robot actually looks a lot like a video clip that I'm going to play for you a little later. Uh, they've got robots doing some pretty amazing things. Um, so anyway, one thing at a time. This, do you get, since he's pulling on it, that the force is going to go in that direction? That makes sense to you? And then I'm going to make this go just a little further so that it can that touch the other vector. Do you get this guy's vector? This is it going to be this black arrow and it's going in that direction? Now think about where the safe would move. Assume that for a moment that it's not just stuck to the ground, you know what I mean? Like let's say you're on an ice rink where it would be easy for it to just kind of slide. Do you get what direction the safe is going to move? Do you get that this is really adding those two vectors together? But the way I have it set up, they are tail to tail. So you can't say the answer is something like that or something like that. Ooh, you're doing it wrong if you're doing it that way. All right. I'm going to give you somebody to work with, and I want you to work on this as a little group practice problem for a moment. And you have to draw a vector diagram. So you got to label this one and label that one and then label the resultant. you got to figure out where to slide them around so that you can see what the answer looks like. Now, one more thing. Somebody might draw this and have an answer of like this. And somebody else draws the drawing differently as, as an answer of that. Just think about this for a second. If I drew those the same length, which I tried to, does it look like they're heading about the same direction? If something has the same length and is heading in the same direction, it is equal. Just so you know, if I take this and I move it like down here, it's equal to up here, which could be over here, which could be over here. But if a kid draw, drew it the same exact length but in the opposite direction, that's completely different. So these would be equal to each other, but those would not because they're going in opposite directions. So it's common to get the answer, like the length of it right, but have it drawn in the wrong direction. All right, so be careful with what direction you draw this puppy when it's all said and done. You're adding up a, a couple of vectors. See if you can draw the right vector diagram and try to draw what the resultant looks like. It's kind of like this. I'm not saying that's the answer, but kind of like that. And if you draw it here or here or with a different diagram and it ends with the same looking arrow, it's the same. If, as long as it has the same direction and the same length, which means magnitude. All right, pause for a second. I'll put you in some groups and have you try it. Okay, judging by the conversations, I'm thinking you're either stuck or done, and I'm hoping it's done. All right, one goes northerly and one easterly. Well, this red one would be northerly because that's more north than this one is. Anyway, this one looks pretty easterly, this black one. Okay, and now the question becomes, which one was stronger? The one that was east was stronger. Do you get the way I currently have drawn it? The black one is shorter than the red one, and that's not good because it's supposed to be stronger in the east direction. Okay, so I'm going to draw this one, the black one, longer than it was. And I'm going to make sure that the red one is for sure shorter, and it is now. Okay, and now how do you actually add them together? Well, there's two schools of thought on this. Some of you are going to prefer to take the red one and move it over. I'm going to get this little tiny red tip out of here. We'll say this was the red one. Okay, you're going to move it over this way. And then add them together that way. And you get an answer that looks like this. Raise your hand if you had an answer that looked like that. Okay. Some of you are going to go, but I thought, Mr. Server, that we were supposed to add them up this way. But look, it's the same exact thing. Do you get I didn't even have to move my resultant? All right. So either way, that blue one, that was the answer. That was the resultant. Whether you added it the one way or the other way. If you got someplace completely different, ask yourself this. Did you have it head to tail? Because if you didn't, if your drawing has got two 
tail ends together, there's no pointy end there, you know, like down here, then you can't be doing it right. When you, you have to move the vectors around so that they go head to tail. Yes? That's a good question. Um, it just says northerly and easterly, which kind of would give me a little license to say maybe it wasn't exactly 90. But if you drew, if you redrew it based on that, that would not have been a bad. That wouldn't have been bad. That would have been actually a good thought. Did any of you take that like seriously that that had to be a 90 and therefore? Okay, and that's fine. If you tweaked it a little bit based on that, that's okay. That's not a bad idea. Okay. So, main idea here was to get kids out of the thought that, oh, you just draw from here to here or something. You don't do that. You got to rearrange your arrows and slide them around so they go tip to tail. The easiest one would be to like slide it over there and then my answer is like that. Okay. So let's talk more about uh, what vectors are like the same versus different. Look at this slide. It's got a big three on it because I'm going to call it example three. It's green. It's, uh, I think it was, well for me anyway, it's on page 10. I don't know, for you, that's, I've probably added a bunch of pages, so it's probably, who's got a page number for that one? Six, thank you. So for you, page six. All right. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are a bunch of vectors. Do you get some of them are exactly the same as each other? Give me an example of two vectors that are exactly the same as each other. Even though they're not in the same exact place, they're exactly the same. D and D and F are obvious ones that are exactly the same. Who has two other ones that they feel like might be exactly the same? It's just maybe hard to tell if they're exactly the same length or exactly the same. B and E. I agree. B and E appear to be exactly the same as each other. And here's how I'm going to test it. I'm going to draw one here, and then I'm going to see if it actually lines up exactly with that one. Oh, yeah, that's pretty darn close. Same length. Yeah, it's really close. Yeah, I think it is, and therefore they're the same. See what I'm saying? You don't have to be in the same exact place to be equal. You have to have the same direction, same magnitude. All right, magnitude meaning length. All right, so... Given what I just said, would you please answer A, B, C, D, and E? Which ones are equal magnitude? Which ones are equal direction? Etc. Pause for a second. Let me try that. Okay. These are pretty easy. Uh, let's just pick B out right now. Are in the same direction. Group that has person uh, row one, person four. That's you guys. Dice of Destiny have chosen you. Yeah. What did you say for B? Um, a. a and C. I can verify they are in the same direction. Go ahead. D and F are in the same direction. Keep going. And B and E are in the same direction. Very good. Okay. Now, one more thing. Notation-wise, you should have a little... You don't have to do this right now. But if you're adding A and C, do you see how I wrote... A, C, like next to each other like that, that would sort of imply I'm adding them together or something. Okay, so, and if I had a little thing over them like this, that would mean vector A and vector C. So, just so you know how you're supposed to write things on the test. This had a picture which didn't have the little vector thingies, but you're supposed to know to write them with a little half arrow on top of them. All right, so adding these vectors together on this slide, if I was going to add A plus B, from what I showed you before, do you get I could just go like this? But I actually have to draw in the answer, which is the resultant, which looks like that. That makes sense? Okay, moving on. If I'm going to add these vectors together, they are drawn in different directions and stuff. I think it wouldn't hurt you to have a little bit of practice in this. Would you just please try F and H? Try to write what you think the resultant is for those. Hint, if you want to, use your iPad's capabilities of drawing on top of this thing and then just grabbing it with the lasso and moving it around. And another reminder, always do it head to tail. Head being the, like the arrow end and tail being the blunt end. 
Always line them up head to tail. And if you get them head to tail, you pretty much can't go wrong. Because there's two different ways you could line up head and tail, but it'll get you the same answer. All right, so try F and H. Okay, so here I'm going to show you on H, if I'm adding A and B, I'm going to grab either one. It does not matter because that, I'm going to draw in my answer in red. That red answer would be the same if I did it that way, or I do think this is kind of fascinating. If I added up head to tail and did it that way, and you're like, Mr. Server, they're not in the same place. That does not matter. Watch how if I just drag this over, it'll match up. See, it was in the same direction and had the same length. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, but you get the same vector. Might be in a different place, but it's heading in the same direction, has the same magnitude. All right, enough about that. Uh... Let's get to our homework for tonight and just make sure you understand the stuff that's on there. So quite a ways down because this is a three-day unit. There we go. The first part, these will be super simple. It's just, is it a scalar or a vector? Hint, main difference, one's got direction. Okay, don't overthink these. Just asking if... This is a measure as a scalar or a vector. All right, moving on to this part. This is where it actually gets challenging. And it's not that hard, but I think it's good to have somebody to check with. You're going to do problems five and six and seven. All right, now on the last one here, number seven, that should have echoes of drawing those 3D diagrams because these can get to be 3D. Now, they bring up this concept of absolute value of. That does not mean absolute value. Now, if I was going to ask you to find that absolute value of, okay, what that means is stripping out the direction. When I do the absolute value, it takes out the direction. Now, think about why. Do you remember when I made it negative, it changed the direction of the opposite? So if I absolute value it, it's saying, I don't care if it's this way or that way. So it's stripping out the direction when you take the absolute value. All right, so go back to this problem now. Look at number six. Let's look at part of number six together here. Consider the parallelogram shown alongside. That's talking about this one. In case you've forgotten the rules on parallelograms, obviously it's got the word parallel in it. Duh, it's got parallel sides. But what else do you know about parallelograms? Besides just having sides that are parallel, here's a couple thoughts. How much, how many degrees do you think those add up to? Because it'd be like a rectangle, right? Except kind of squished to the side. Four angles adds up to 360. Okay, so if that adds up to 360, one more thought. What do you think these two have to add up to? 180. Think about that. And then how about this? What do you think these two angles have to add up to? 180. All right, so if this is 100, this must be 80. And then I can go follow through the whole diagram with that and say, well, if these two have to add up to 180, then this must be 100. Another way you can say it is that the angles that are across from each other have to be equal. So there's all kinds of cool things happening in a parallelogram. All right, so now, what if you actually have to do this? Well, one thing to warn you, and I apologize for this, but this is not something that we can, we don't have a nice little symbol for it on our computer keyboards. And so... These are supposed to have a little arrow like that that's got a half arrow, you know, above them to say vector. All right. What if they do the absolute value thing? That's saying not counting the direction is vector A equal to vector B. So which of the following statements are true? All right, little a, where is it? It's right here. Little b, where is it? 
right here. Are those actually equal to each other? Is, are they equal in any way? Are they the same direction? The red one and the blue one are the same direction? Come on. No, obviously not. Are they the same length and therefore the same magnitude? No. All right. Now, Meg, this little absolute value thing you will talk more about later. But don't forget, you have a key that's posted as well. All right. Now you got a bunch of time to work. And uh, I'm also handing the test back in a minute here. But uh, let me do one more in number five, just so you get how these work. A, B, that's this guy. And there should have been a little vector thingy, but we don't have a symbol for it. Plus B, C, that's this one. Should have had a little vector in it. Don't have a symbol for it. Gives you what answer? That one. How could I describe that one? A, C. Now think about it. Would A, C be different than C, A? Yes, it would, because it would change the direction, right? So this one is equal to, from A to C, it's just like, sort of like segments being added together, except these have direction. So it's A, C, and again, you'd have a little, what do you call that, vector symbol over it. Okay. They get more complicated when you add up like three of them. But they were they worked out kind of cool. So all right, I want to give you some work time and hand your test back, so that's all I have time for for today.